Hey guys, since 2017 is finally upon us, I think it's time for me to do my favorite books from 2016. So if there are some books that I've read, particularly I guess if you follow my grid read since I dropped off the face of the earth for like six months, um, I have like a bunch of books that I liked and there are some that aren't on this video because I have mentioned them in previous years of my favorite videos and I will link my 2014 and my 2015 favorites down below if you really want to go watch them. Just warning, it's really bad camera quality because I was using a really shitty camera at the time. But, you know, whatever. So I have a total of, I believe, 14 books to show you and talk about. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. I think only one or two of these books was actually published in 2016. These are just out of the books that I read in 2016 that I really enjoyed and really liked. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, to start off, I'm going to pick the last three books in the Percy Jackson series. Um, in my 2015 favorites, I read the first two books and I absolutely loved it and I continue reading, rereading the series and finished up with these three. It was a great way to start off my 2016 and oh I just loved being back in this world and having all these characters and just reliving all of these experiences. It was just absolutely phenomenal. If you still have not picked up Percy Jackson, like what are you doing with your life? Like go out Buy, just buy the first one. Just buy The Lightning Thief and just give it a taste. Because I promise you, it's like crack cocaine. Once you read one, you gotta have the next. And I would know, I have just trying to turn one of my oldest friends um, onto this series. She was over here the other day and I just was like, take this with you. Just, we're not gonna go. I mean, I know there's like a shit ton of books that you need to read. But just take the first one and get a little taste. And then we'll talk. She's gonna love it. I already know it. Next, I have the last three books in Rick Riordan's Hero of Olympus series. Um, I read, I did reread the first two books, don't worry, but I did talk about them in 2014 when I first read them, so that's why I'm just sticking with these because I actually did finally read these. It took me forever to get around to them, but I did, and oh my god, like, why did I wait so long to like reread and like catch up on this series? The next book I want to talk about, I actually read this summer during the book Tubathon, and I read it was in Colorado, and it was a really quick, short read. Um, and that is Tiger Lily by Jody Lynn Anderson. I currently do not have it because I actually just lent it out to my friend that I was talking about a minute ago. She came over, and I just like sent her home with a bunch of books, and I was like, You need to read these. Um, this book I absolutely loved. It's been sitting on my shelf for like ever and I finally got around to reading it. It's a Peter Pan retelling that centers more around Tiger Lily than it does Peter Pan and just the way it's written and everything. Oh my god, it's just like I, I can't even like express how much I love this and I know I made a book talk about this but I don't think I ever posted it. I will go through and search and see if I did. If not, I'm sorry. I also last the memory card with that video on it so I probably won't be able to post it but absolutely amazing if you love retellings if you love Peter Pan like I do you will absolutely love this book like definitely give it a try it's a really short read too so like just just trust me on this next would have to be Wonder Lost by Jen Malone um, this is a really cute little contemporary it really got me in a nice contemporary mood for the summer and it's gotten me really excited for my study abroad session in Spain coming up this spring semester. It follows a girl named Aubrey and she has to take her older sister's place on taking the senior citizen tour group throughout Europe, parts of Europe, and she has to pretend to be her sister and it's just about her like getting out and experiencing the world and like becoming confident in herself and just just oh it's just so freaking adorable and then there's like romance and it's just so cute and it's it's freaking adorable like if you really want like a really nice like cutesy little contemporary like you need to go pick this book up and like the cover is really cute and the title's really cute so why not my next book is called beautiful chaos by rm drake it is a collection of poems by rm drake he is a quite a popular um poem mist poemist poem writer, I guess. I hadn't really heard of him, but um, one of my friends really loves him, and she'd been telling me she wanted one of his books, 
and she had recently gone through a really, really rough, um, I don't want to say breakup because they were never together, but this really rough patch with this guy who was just, uh, she was way too good for. And um, she came back from going up to Stillwater to visit some of her friends and I surprised her with it and she loved it but before I gave it to her I read it. It's just a collection of poems about different things about love and like tearing yourself apart and I just absolutely loved it. Like I want to go out and read the rest of his poem collections. Like if you are into poems you should totally check out all of his work. I am not really a poem person but I absolutely loved, loved, loved this like short collection. It's really easy to get through. I got through it in like one sitting. So you should definitely check that out. Following in that, I um, read Don't Let Me Be Lonely by Claudia Rankine. Um, it is a, an American lyric. So the whole thing is written in lyric. And I had to read this for my creative writing class. And he made us read a lot of poems. And as I have already said, I am not really a poem person. And we had to read like three of these like lyric books. I didn't even finish one of them. Like it's still like tagged as currently reading on my Goodreads. So I feel like I should probably finish reading it. Maybe. Um, the other one, it was okay. I really did love this one. Just the way she talks about events that have happened and dealing with certain things. Um, that really relate to society and I really related to it. It deals with death and suicide and just the way we perceive a lot of things and I just really sat really well with me and I really loved it. So I mean and it's a really quick read too like you should totally check it out. Like I would never have thought of this or picked it up if it hadn't been for my creative writing class and I'm really glad I did because I really did enjoy this one. So I have one classic on this list which like never happens because I never read classics because I just don't really like classics. This one um, I had to read for my lit class and that's going to be Henry IV Part 1 by William Shakespeare. Um, I had to read this for my English lit class 1800 and let me tell you Middle English is like not my cup of tea. Like no, I struggled so hard reading half the things. Thankfully there's this awesome website called Spark Notes which saved me like the entire semester. Basically, this is a history play. It recounts some of the events of Henry IV before he takes the throne, and there's a big battle and everything, and I just really liked it, and it was funny because my professor was talking and he said, you know, a lot of people don't like this one. They like one of the other, you know, history plays he wrote about God knows all the fucking kings and whatnot, um, but he said this is his favorite, and I think, honestly, this is probably my favorite uh, Shakespeare play I've ever read. Um, I just really liked it. I, I don't even know how to like put it into words, but like if you just give it a chance, like maybe you'll read it eventually at some point for school, but I really enjoyed this book. So I'm really proud. I got one classic on this list that I liked. So go me. Next, I have um, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, book one, The Sword of Summer by Rick Reardon. Um, this is one of his new series. It does not really involve Percy Jackson. It's still in the same world, but it deals with Norse mythology, which is like the Vikings and stuff. And um, we follow our main character, Magnus Chase, who happens to be related to Annabeth Chase from the Percy Jackson series. And it's freaking amazing. Like, I, going into Percy Jackson, I knew a little bit about Greek mythology because everybody learns it in school. However, I know like absolutely nothing about Norse mythology. I, the only thing I know is that Thor is like the god of like thunder or something and Loki is like his brother and he's the god of mischief because I've seen like maybe 10 minutes of Avengers and that's it. So like I have no clue what I was going into. Reardon has this magnificent way of explaining things to you that you don't understand. So I'm slowly getting the grasp on the Norse mythology realm and it's just really awesome. So you should totally check it out if you haven't. Like all of the characters in this book are freaking amazing and the plot is amazing and I'm currently reading the second book right now and oh my goodness, like... <sighs> Next, this is just like the year of Reardon, I guess, because this is like... Three, six, this is the like eighth reading book for this thing and wow I read like I said I was rereading slash catching up on all of Reardon's books 
at this point, all I have to finish is The Hammer of Thor, and then I have to go read The King Chronicles, and I will have read everything in this world until the next two books come out, and that's okay. Um, so, <laughs> oh, I got an old man. I got an old man to come visit me. This is Scrappy. This is my dog's, my dad's dog. And he's really fat and really heavy, and he doesn't like to be held. So I'm gonna put him down now. Anyways, so back to what I was saying. So in this book, it is placed in the Percy Jackson world. It does not revolve around Percy Jackson. It revolves around the god Apollo who has been turned into a mortal and he has to go through these trials and figure out how to gain Zeus's favor back in order to become an Olympian again and we get introduced to some new characters, we get to see some old characters, and we get to see an OTP that everybody was like needs to get together at the end of Blood of Olympus and just just I'm just gonna say it like my feels man my feels every time they were together um Yes, so definitely you should read this. It's Apollo is like absolutely hilarious to read from and you just you just got to. You got to. And we do get to see Percy. So like if if the Apollo thing doesn't catch your interest, then just know you get to at least see Percy. So you should read it anyways. Okay, so we're now on to my final book for 2016. Well, it's not really a book. Um but that is going to be Saga Volume 6. Um this graphic novel series is just amazing. I love the artwork. I love the color palettes. I just, I love the storyline. It's just so amazing. And these things are just so easy to zip through. And it's addicting. And like right now I'm sitting, like there was like a cliffhanger at the end. And I'm just like, where's the next volume? Because I need it. And it doesn't come out till like June or July, I think. And I'm like... <sighs> I shouldn't have bought this till it was out, so then I could just like at least like have the next one, but you know, it's whatever. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the saga deals these two warring planets of different species. There is the people of Wreath, which is a moon, and they um, have horns, and they're kind of like a, kind of remind me like goats and stuff, because like they do have the ears too. And then there's um, Landfall, which is the planet that uh, Wreath revolves around, which have all of, um, the people have wings and they're at war and they've been at war for years and they've taken it off of their own planets and they're like taking over these other planets all over the universe and it's just like a huge deal and our two main characters are each from a different planet and they're cute and so they end up falling in love and it's a Romeo and Juliet kind of plot and they have a baby and then there's people after them trying to kill them and they're just trying to survive and it's just Oh my god, it's so good. Like, go pick this up. Like, go pick up the first one and just pick up all six and just, like, sit down and read them. That's what I did during the Holiday Book Tubathon because I had already bought this. I was like, I really want to read this. But I was like, but it's been a really long time since I read the other five. So I literally sat down one night and just, like, read all six. And it was flipping amazing. Like, just do it. That is it for my top books of 2016. Definitely a year of Riordan, like, I wish every year could be like this, but it's not because it only puts out like one or two books a year. Let me know in the comments what your favorite books you read in 2016 were, if you read any of these, what your thoughts and opinions on them, and we'll, you know, talk down below. It's been a pretty decent reading year. I actually made it to my goal. I had a goal of 30. And I read 33, even though six of those were graphic novels. It doesn't matter, 33's, I still did it. If you want to be friends or whatnot, all of my social media links are down below. Go friend me, follow me, whatevs. Until then, I'm Chrissy. I'll see you in my next video.